Monday, October 21st. Uh, happy Monday. I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, I just kind of going over my schedule a little bit. And next week I will be off Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There won't be a podcast Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You might get a newsletter, but there won't be a podcast. Monday, I am going to Monday night's Pittsburgh uh, Giants football game up in Pittsburgh. So I'm flying out Monday morning. I'm flying back Tuesday morning, so you might get something in the Tuesday afternoon area, but I doubt that I'll want to do anything, so I'll probably just take off. And then Wednesday, I have an appeal uh, for my property taxes, and I'm going to vote, so everybody get out there and vote. Uh, That's my schedule for next week, so if you want, do your own podcast. And you might say, well, how do I do my own podcast? Well, I don't do anything that doesn't include these tools, okay? Trendspider. It is on sale for just the next day. Get TrendSpider. Okay, you can get the enhanced plan for the price of the standard plan. And you get the enhanced plan includes 10 active windows, 100 alerts, 30 simultaneous trading box. So you get everything that you get in the standard, but you get more of it. And so at at $650 a year, $54 a month. If you're not trading enough and $54 a month sounds like a lot, Do not get it. Find yourself a free charting tool, but you'll see how I use the four-hour algorithm, how I use all of this other stuff. Again, $54 a month is not a lot for the value that I get, and we will go over a lot of value that you'll get in TrendSpider. So use TrendSpider. And the other two tools that I use is Seeking Alpha Premium and Alpha Picks. Alpha Picks is so good. If you are paying a financial advisor... 1% of your portfolio value, I would argue that 145, go back to July 1st, 2022 and see how well your financial advisor is performing. Because if they're not making 145% over that time period, which the S&P is making 51%, if your financial advisor is making 51% or less, why are you paying him 1% when you can just buy VOO? at 0.01%. Why? And, and and if he's not making 145% and that's the goal of your portfolio over that time period, again, it's since July 1st, 2022. So go and test it. Go and test it. Go and look at your thing. This is 450 bucks for this portfolio. Past performance doesn't guarantee future performance, but I went over five names last week. Okay, the most five, the five most recent names that Alpha Picks has picked. I've only mentioned one on this podcast. And you guys know I mention a lot of names that are flying. These names were up 50, 100% since they were bought. So Alpha Picks is a fantastic data driven portfolio. You get a name on the first, you get a name on the 15th. They tell you when to sell. It is, it is a data-driven portfolio. They tell you specific times when to sell, and it has to do with the quant rating that you get in Seeking Alpha, Seeking Alpha Premium. So if you want to sign up for just Seeking Alpha Premium, the quant beats just you know the S&P, and, and you can choose stocks based on those five criteria. And I love the quant. I loved all the analysis. Again, I don't have a team of 20 advisors or 30 advisors like most hedge funds. I use Seeking Alpha as my hedge fund advisory. So again, if you want to do your own podcast, try it on on, using TrendSpider and using the bundle. The bundle saves you $159. If you get them individually, you can save on each one individual. Go to my link tree. Okay, the top one's TrendSpider. The second one's the bundle. The third one is the uh, premium Seeking Alpha Premium. The fourth one is the Alpha Picks. Again, if you just want a portfolio. So do your own podcast. So uh, let's just start by saying over the weekend, I went through some photos. There's a picture of me from 2001 not buying NVIDIA for 51 cents. Okay, there, there's a lesson in here. There's a lesson. Stock picking is hard. So getting those 10 baggers, 
it is, is extremely difficult, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. Okay, you've got to pay attention to trends. You've got to pay attention to technology. You've got to pay attention. They weren't making money in 2001. There is no way I would have put money into NVIDIA in 2001. But what I would have done is had VOO, had QQQ, one of those ETFs. Okay, one of those ETFs will always have NVIDIA in it. It will be one of those bigger companies that just makes money and it will be added to the S&P. And over time, the S&P or QQQ have done very, very well. So if you're not comfortable picking stocks, just make sure you have ETFs because I've said it before and I'll say it again. Being time in the market beats timing the market. Okay. So if you are a person. Uh, so the best performing stock fell 35% in one month and you didn't buy a single damn share. If you are one of these people and you're asking me if it's too late, buy an ETF. You may not be a good stock picker because if the number one stock with a valuation dipped 35% and you didn't buy one share, it dipped 35% and you didn't buy one share. Okay, let's just use that as a lesson. It dipped 35%. There were three times the algorithm said get in. Three times it said get in. 117, it got you out right afterwards. 105, it got you out with 11% gain. It got you in at 113 and we're sitting at 137. Three times it got you in. You could say four times because at 128, you're still making money. I bought up here. I didn't sell up here. I bought more down here. Did I sell up here? Nope. Because I'm I'm a long-term bull on NVIDIA. That That's just me. So if you didn't buy one share, don't go asking me, hey, is it too late to get in? Because you had your chance. Maybe just buy it. Okay. Let's look at the market right now. Some of the biggest movers. Spirit Airlines surged 50% because they got money. That's it. Drug surged another 14%. I think this one's even up more now. Uh, we can look at drug in the pre-market. Let's see. Where is drug? Uh, drug. This is a psychedelic. So this is basically mushrooms, legalizing mushrooms. The valuation is absolutely crazy. It is crazy. They are said to see a path forward for ecstasy-based drugs. That came out Saturday. So this one is going to soar. It's up 26% for 59. When I brought this one up, I brought it up on the 4-hour. I brought it up on the 65-minute algorithm. Okay? The 4-hour got you in at $1.53. You're at $47.37. Okay? Let's just say you had $1,000 and, and you put it in at, at, at $1.53. Okay, it's 47 times. If you put $1,000 in there, you're sitting at $47,000 right now. That's the four-hour algorithm. If we go and we look at the 65-minute algorithm, again, all of this comes to you when you sign up for TrendSpider. If we look at the 65-minute, you can see it got you in here. You had confirmation. That's what my out, my uh, newsletter goes over, how to trade this one. You had confirmation. You made a nice 2,122 percent and then getting in at this $50 mark at the $50 you're trading at 47 but you could have made 64 percent when it got you out on that candle again that candle goes up and down you could hold it now I think it's going to go back above that 50 $50 mark I think psychedelics are a drug that that you know psychedelics are something and this one is the hot stock so am I buying it if I had time to trade, I would absolutely trade this one on a short time frame. Whether it's a five-minute chart, whether it's a 65-minute chart, I would trade this one on a short time frame. Right now, I do the podcast. I just don't have the pre-market stuff to trade. Okay? So I would argue that, yeah, it's a good one. Now, some of the... Um, other biggers, Boeing went 4%, tentative agreement between the company and its unions. I still think the company is broken. I wouldn't buy it. Canview rose 4.7% because activist Starboard took a significant stake in the company. This is all coming from Seeking Alpha. There's nothing new in here. You could trade all these companies. You could buy them. Say you don't know about SAVE and you say, oh my God, it's up 38%. I want to buy it. No. Strong sell on the quant. Why? Well, let's learn why. 
Spirit Airlines has characteristics which have historically associated with poor stock performance. The company has EPS forward long-term growth of minus 5.84%. It's not going to grow. The company has one-year performance of minus 65%. That's just not a good one to buy. So if you're looking to buy our top-rated industrials, you can look at them on the quant rating. But say you wanted to do that. It's not a good buy. You can trade it. But don't but don't think you're going to, you know, oh my God, I'm going to time the bottom. Let's look at SAVE. Let's look at it in the four-hour algorithm because I don't think that a four-hour algorithm makes you money. It loses you 52%. But if you bought this 24 months ago and you said, you know what, Spirit Airlines, I love watching people fight on an airplane. I love people arguing that they shouldn't pay for their baggage when they paid $25 for a seat. I love that. Well, you lost 92% if you bought and held. It is a, a junk airline from a stock standpoint. They will declare bankruptcy. The only reason they're up is because they got some money. That's it. So you deserve that pop. You can trade it on a short time frame. Now, the Qs, it's showing st- strong confluence and support around 480 to 485 if we see a pullback. So if you're looking to buy the NASDAQ 100 because you know what? Hey, I, I, I want to get into the NASDAQ 100, but it's just been flying... I didn't use the four-hour algorithm to get in at 468. Is it too late? You're asking me again if it's too late. What the hell's your problem? It's not too late. Just get in for the long term. Your time frame matters. It's a five. If it's a five to ten year uh, time horizon, you're not going to remember whether you bought it at 494 or 480. You ain't going to remember. Buy a thousand. You know, thousand. If you if your a position size that you want is ten thousand, buy a thousand dollars of it today. You ain't going to remember. Dollar cost average your way in. You have confirmation. But in my mind, I think the Bollinger Bands have cinched out a little bit. If you see a pullback this week, 480 should be your support. Now, I've identified 450 as the support that I'd like to see. But I am still 90% invested in this market. It's the 5% that I'm looking for. And I'm just looking for, you know, we'll go over this in a little bit. Uh, but I am looking for some type of volatility that pulls me back, pulls the market back to in order to get in. It might be higher than it is today. But again, I'm 90% invested. I'm 5% out. So I'm just looking to put that 5% back in. But look at this 50-day, how it's, it's contained, sustained its move up. Okay, the 50-day is at 450. If we pull back to the 50-day, you better be buying. You better be buying because on this weekly chart, if you pull back to the 50 day, it's always been a buying opportunity. So again, QQQ support around 480. Now, uh, precious metals, silver, historically precious metals like silver thrive on uncertainty. And with the U.S. political landscape heating up, it's no wonder we're seeing a rally and gold is at all time highs as well. So you're seeing these because there's uncertainty. Now, I will tell you, uh, TrendSpider did a great, a great, and you can see there's uh, little um, uh, indexes here and time frames where you can break it up. Uh, the first guy was fantastic, uh, Caruso, Matt Caruso. He was great. Or I'm sorry, Matt Caruso. I didn't like Matt Caruso. I liked Ryan Dietrich. Ryan Dietrich, the first guy. Ryan Caruso, I'd probably skip. It was way too technical for me, way too kind of, Eh, this is it and blah 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 dire straits is kind of what i would say uh now kabucha i i looked but he's more options market so i didn't care john bollinger at, at about the 123 mark this at, at 140 i'm sorry 140 john bollinger if you've ever heard me name bollinger this is the guy who created the bollinger band he is unbelievable his analysis is fantastic. Jason does just a masterful interview with him. Okay. He says EQAL, which is an equal equal weighted Invesco Russell 1000 uh, index. He said this is what he watches when he wants to see is the market in a good place. This was analyzed at about one hour, 49 minutes. If you want to watch it, all the timestamps are in that video. Uh, I liked his his description of this one. He said, you're in a bull market. The Bollinger Bands cinched up. You're trading at the top. He said, this is one that he watches. Now, the MACD, you're, you're what, uh, 0.4%? 
you're at a high. Your RSI, 67. If you move to a weekly on this one, it still looks good. Still looks positive. We probably still have some move. You know, you're looking at 2021. Look at that one, the equal way to just punch up there. On his watch list, your SPY, MDY, IJR, IWC, RSP, which is equal weighted S&P 500, IWV, and EQAL. He said, and this is what I wanted to point out specifically here. He said, if you head into the election with the VIX at 10 or 12, he's super nervous. And that's a, a, that's a master technician telling you, if you enter into the election, which could be very, conta- uh, very kind of, we might not have a president identified until a week after, until two weeks after. If Trump, uh, the, the last Trump election is any indication, he's never going to let this go and we're going to have another January 6th. If you enter the election at 10 or 12, expect the market to absolutely go crazy with volatility. And what happened when crazy uh, the, the volatility went nuts? What happened in August when it spiked? The market pulled back 5%. So I, the discussion with John was absolutely brilliant. Now, Shai Bulor is also on the here. He He's in the middle here um, at, at this point. He goes over... Uh, several names. I'll put them in the uh, in the newsletter. But he goes over three names. He's uh, where he's for uh, Kamala. It's uh, First Solar Baba and then uh, Zillow Redfin Open. It's six names, but that basically the housing stuff. Three names. He's bullish. If Trump wins, Palantir, Coin, and Tesla. And he brings up Rivian and Lucid could be really hurt if Trump wins because that's seventy five hundred dollars. Blah blah blah. I'll put it in all in the newsletter. And then the final presenter was uh, what I like. Um, the uh, this is uh, the go no go. These guys are fantastic, and it's a a custom indicator that's in TrendSpider for you to use. And again, TrendSpider's on sale. The go no go is a fan. You can see it right here. This is what you get. It tells you no go. Tells you no go. It tells you go. This is like the four hour algorithm, but it's built in. It doesn't give you prices. You can do your uh, your own uh, analysis, but you can set an alert that says, "Hey, in this stock, it's go. In this stock, it's no go." These are data driven strategies that work. And these guys put it into TrendSpider, and they allow you to use it. It is unbelievable. Uh, I actually use it sometimes. I really like it. So um, let's talk about NVIDIA. We talked about NVIDIA. You know, hey, you had a chance to buy it, 35%, the, the best performing stock. If you ever, if anybody ever comes to you and says, NVIDIA is just like Cisco in 2000, this is the card you can show them. Just, you know, this is your mic drop moment. Price to earnings, Cisco in 2000, it was 113. We talk about how Palantir is too expensive for me to buy. NVIDIA is 51. And historically, that's fairly cheap. Price to sales, NVIDIA is 25. Cisco was 15. Profit margin, NVIDIA has a 48% profit margin. Cisco, 14%. So all of these numbers point to NVIDIA is not Cisco. And if it is Cisco, it's in the early days of Cisco. So do not be afraid of a lot of things. The one thing that it will that that the market will do in my mind is hold Nvidia to its three trillion dollar market cap, which is where it's trading right now. And that's where I think you've got an issue. If you go to Finviz and we're just going to go to this screener and we're going to go to uh, index, we're going to go to the s and p five hundred and we're going to sort by market cap, okay? The top three companies, it's Apple at $3.5 trillion. It's NVIDIA at $3.3 trillion. And how do you get market cap? It's just the number of shares times the price of the stock. That's how market cap is actually calculated. That's it. It's very simple to calculate, very easy to calculate. But that price per share, the number of shares, they can retire the number of shares, but they've got to do that through a process. And more than likely, they're not doing that. Because they're giving more of their executives executive pay through the stock. They're doing what Tesla did, making their employees millionaires through the stock. And so the stock price is what you have to worry about. Now, NVIDIA has a $3.3 trillion uh, market cap. That's where it's going to, to, in my mind, cap. But this guy, Eric Jackson, 
He was on June 25th. He thinks it can go to $250 a share and create a $6 trillion market cap by the end of the year. Is that crazy? I don't know. This dude's a professional who's on CNBC. He's got a hedge fund with billions of dollars under management. So in my mind, I think that's a good play. Do I think 138 is is a bad price for NVIDIA? I don't think so. I think valuation is fine. But who knows? Again, the market cap, I don't think that the market cap wants to hold on to this one. So I, I think you'll see this one trade. I think you'll see it uh, flounder. Now, in, in my mind, that 140 price, that 140 level, I think that's a resistance until it turns into support. So $3 trillion may be just the, the, the way that, you know, hey, when it pulls back, NVIDIA is a $3 trillion company, but it may go to 6 You just don't know. One thing that I do know, Alpha Picks, Alpha Picks performance. This is the Alpha Picks performance. We went over this, you know, if, if you do, why are you paying a financial advisor when you can just buy Alpha Picks? And, and this is the one month, three month, and year to date returns. Okay. Since inception, you may say, well, you know, they, they can do, they, these are the actual returns on those stocks. They're not manipulating this. This isn't like, oh, we bought at the low and, and, and you know, we're, we're calculating this at the low and today we're at the highs. No, this is when they buy it. They, they issue it on the 1st and the 15th. These are actual returns of that portfolio. And what's great is when you sign up for, tra- uh, for Seeking Alpha, for the Alpha Picks, when you sign up for Alpha Picks, they give you a percentage of the portfolio. So say you have $10,000 and you want to put it into Alpha Picks. You can do that by just buying fractional shares and make sure your brokerage allows you, like Weeble. Weeble allows you to buy out. Here's what you do. You go to uh, my link tree, okay? Sign up for the bundle. Sign up for the bundle or just Alpha Picks, one or the other, and then go to Weeble and, and open up an account. You'll get free stocks. You'll get free stocks when you open up a Weeble account. It's the fifth link right here, okay? And take $10,000 and just buy fractional shares of the shares that that Alpha Picks has, you're able to do that because they've calculated the percentage. Uh, it, it is what it is today. So a stock that has grown in Alpha Picks, maybe uh, you know, I, I think the top one is like one percent. You can buy one percent of that. So you buy, you know, ten. I'm sorry, it's eight percent, eight or eight or ten percent. It's grown into. I think the top one. I forget which one's the top performer. Um, but it was like eight or ten percent. I went over it last week. It's in the newsletter. But if you want that, you can get it. Okay. One stock that is in the alpha picks and is getting ready to potentially break out is GM. Okay. GM is in alpha picks. Why? I have no idea. They have done phenomenal with it. I don't know if I pointed out. Let me see if I point out where they where they picked it. Let's go to the weekly. No, I don't point out. I don't. I forget which month it was around here somewhere earlier in the year where it was trading at like thirty. You're at fifty. Look at that resistance. If it can break through fifty, and it's trading at forty nine right now, if it can break through fifty, you've got sixty five in your sights. You've got sixty five in your sights if it can break through. Again, this is a fundamental analysis. Look at this. This this is a technical analysis, but Alpha Picks is fundamental. Let's take a look at the S&P, okay? The S&P, some of these names might shock you. This is the year-to-date return of the S&P 500. It's all 500 names. So you've got Vistra as number one. NVIDIA is not even number one. Vistra is up 240%. This is a utility in Texas. VST, okay? And I'll put this list in the, uh, a link to this list from Slick Charts in the newsletter. So if you want to see this, you can look at it. NVIDIA is number two at 178%. Palantir, we know all these names. Constellation Energy is number four. Howmet Aerospace is number five. I've never mentioned that name. I don't know what they do. GE Vernova is a power company that was spun off from GV, uh, GE. Targa Resources Group. United Airlines is number eight. Iron Mountain is number nine. And Arista Networks. I've told you to buy Arista Networks. I think that one's a great one. Now, of those names, I think I've mentioned probably four. 
So, you know, Oracle, podcast favorite. That's number 16, Supermicro, podcast favorite. Out of the core portfolio, neither one of those. They're up 65, 66%. Meta is up 62, 62%. Broadcom is up 61%. Now, here's an idea. Go down to the negatives. Find a stock that is a good company with good earnings, with good management, and a good product, and find one of these. And if you find one of these, they may be due for a rebound. Because remember, you know, Ford, horrible, horrible. Verisign, maybe good. You can use Seeking Alpha Premium, and that's this one. Seeking Alpha Premium gets you the quant. Let's just take one of these, okay? We'll just take one. EQT, uh, that's an energy company. We'll go to Seeking Alpha, and we'll just say EQT, okay? This is how you get down a rabbit hole on this one. Now, the quant has it as a hold. Why? Well, because the valuation, they're not making money. You can see the PE, but they're expected to make money. Their growth, not great, minus 49%. So it's not good. Now, when you look at it, you can say, well, it's ranked 15 out of 68. What's a number one? Vista Energy. Vista Energy is number one quant stock in, in the oil and gas exploration. Now, when you look at it, the market cap, $4 billion. So it's not a huge company. When you look, go and look at Wall Street, it's got a $56 price target. It is now trading at $48. When you look at this, yes, it's come down. They've chased it up a little bit, and it's come down. It was at 63. Just what? 10 days ago, it was at 63. They have brought it down. There are 10 analysts that cover this. You can look. The valuation is good. Year to date, let's look at some of the performance of this. Year, uh, year to date, this is up 63%. This isn't in the S&P 500 because 63% would be up there. Let's see. Is it? Let's see. Is it uh, 63%? Let's see if it's up here. It might be. I may have spoken. Uh, Vistra Energy? No, it's not in the S&P 500. So it's not there. At least I don't see it. But again, NRG Energy, you can take that list and look at some opportunities. That's how you research. That's just an idea. Now we had some insiders. Uh, Marvell, MRV, MRVL is the symbol. Bought $1 million of shares in his company. Okay. The, this purchase came just as the stock. You can look. Left shoulder. He bought. Head. He didn't buy. Right shoulder. He's buying as it breaks out from its head and shoulder pattern. Okay. That's a daily chart. Let's see if I would buy this one. Marvell. Uh, the four-hour algorithm, it got you in at 73. This one makes you 36%. Buying and holding this one makes you 122%. So it's been a good flyer. Look at that. Your 50-day bounced right off the 200-day, and it's moved up. Your all-time high is up here at 88. Let's look at Marvell as far as fundamentals go. Marvell, as far as fundamentals go, it's a quant. It's a buy. The only val the, the valuation is the only one that's down, and it's because the PE is is so high. Now the peg going forward, which includes growth, is one point six two, so it's good. Wall Street says it's a strong buy. There's thirty four analysts that cover this. They have a ninety one dollar price target. That's fourteen percent upside. They haven't brought it down as it dipped, and that dude just bought a million dollars worth. There's an idea for you. Okay, another idea that's in our watch list. If you sign up for TrendSpider, you get the watch list. You get the daily stock pick watch list. Toast. The stock is quietly breaking out of its multi-year IPO base, notching its highest weekly close since December 2021. This is a growth name, so we can look at the fundamentals. With earnings just around the corner in November, this momentum may be setting the stage for an even bigger run. T-O-S-T. -S and you can take a look at this, Okay. This is Q3. These are the fundamentals. This is revenue. Q4, they're growing at 27%. It's continuing its growth. TOST. Let's take a look how the four-hour algorithm performs. And again, I'm just using my way of managing portfolio, finding names, looking at this. Now, the algorithm on Toast loses you 7%. Buying and holding makes you 78%. That means I don't think that this strategy is a great strategy, but we've identified that range between 21 and 25 as it breaks out, and it's now at 30, okay? I identified that range here on the, the, the weekly. You can clearly see the $25 range right there. 
Now, the RSI is a little high, but their earnings are coming up November 4th. Is this breaking out? Will they uh, actually make money? Let's go over to Seeking Alpha and look at this. TOST, it's a strong buy in the quant. We can look at the summary of this one. The valuation, it's a D because they're not making money. They're expected to make money, but they're not making money. The quant still says it's a strong buy. Now, if you go to like a local restaurant and, and they have like a, a, a kind of a website that looks really good, uh, but they're a little mom and pop shop, it's either DoorDash if they deliver through DoorDash or Toast. Toast doesn't require them to be on a uh, on a, a delivery service. So Toast is actually a preferred platform. Still costs them a lot of money because they basically automate that local restaurant, but you'll notice Toast on the uh, on the receipt, uh, on your charge, everything like that. Now, 28 analysts cover this. 13 say uh, hold, 5 say buy, 9 have a strong buy. The average price target 28 bucks. Do you want to buy this one? Might be a little bit extended. You may want to wait for a pullback. But if this one pulls back before its earnings, it might be time to look into getting it. Because as you look at the the the, um, the valuation of this one, or I'm sorry, the growth, 32% year over year uh, revenue growth. That's great. Profitability, 22% margin. The the problem that they they currently have is that they have to cut their costs, their their prices in order to compete. And that's it. But I think this one's breaking out. I think if it pulls back below that $25, $27, I think you just buy it. I think you buy it as a, tra a, a trade. Now, there was a lot of talk of, of nuclear this weekend and, and Bitcoin. Those are the two hot sectors. Combine them both and you've got this stock WULF. Okay, WULF is a Bitcoin miner that uses nuclear energy. That, that's essentially the way it was described to me. Now, we can take a look at the four-hour algorithm on this one. The four-hour algorithm, you may, you know, sit down for this because this is, this, is, this is good. The four-hour algorithm over 24 months makes you 695%. And you may say, oh, God, it must be a high flyer. If you bought and held, you made 354%. I am happy if you bought and held and made 354% over two years. I'm even more happy if you used the four-hour algorithm and made 695%. Now, in pre-market, this one is down 0.76. This was all over the internet. Your RSI, a little bit extended at 65. They have earnings coming up November 12th. November 12th, if you look at the weekly, you're down below your 200-day. Now, if we go and we look at the fundamentals of this one, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be nuts. You just... You know, they're going to say, hey, it's not great. This combines the two hottest sectors, nuclear and crypto. Now, Wall Street, there's only eight analysts that cover this, but they say it's worth $6.54. $6.54. Now, analysts rating history, they brought it down. They brought it way down. But from a valuation standpoint, doesn't they're not making money. They're not making money. Their growth, uh, revenue growth, 197% year over year. Profitability, 62% gross profit margin. Levered free cash flow margin, they're losing 108%. It's a big bit. They're basically losing money, but it's a Bitcoin miner. It's software. Now, year to date, this one is up, uh, let's say, 115%. Over the last month, um, last one month, let's do five days. Oh, come on, Seeking Alpha. Five days, they're up 10%. Uh, the four-hour algorithm, let's let's look at it in the four-hour algorithm because that one makes us 695%. It had a buy around $4, $4.40. So it had a buy of $4.40. You're at 517 Now, it's turning over a little bit. I'm seeing some uh, some resistance here at about 530 So 518 you're seeing some resistance. I don't know that I'd necessarily get in here, but I'd follow that four-hour algorithm for sure. For sure, your average win is 50%. So that combines both uh, crypto and Bitcoin, the two hot sectors. Now, uh, again, if you want to look at this from another standpoint, here's a weekly chart that, that TrendSpider put in, and it, it, it's basically the wedge. 
and it looks like it could break out on that wedge. If you're seeing this right here, you're seeing that support and you're seeing that resistance right there. Right now, you're seeing that and it's going. Where did it go in the past? You've got the MACD curling up and this is on a weekly and you've got the volume. This is called divergence and it's bullish. It was all over Twitter this weekend. I would expect this one to see some movement this week. Uh, now, nuclear, Shy gives you a bunch of nuclear names here. Uh, SMR, Oclo, NNE, uh, BWXT. All of these I will put in the newsletter if you don't want to read them. But this is nuclear. Okay, This is the, the new hot sector. This, this is part of AI. This is uh, basically pushing the energy portion of AI. It's not something new, but it is. You can pick these names. CCJ is the only one that I, I really know of. I know Oclo and I know NNE because those have been brought up. But I think CCJ is the only one that's actually making money. So if you want another energy, some other energy names, here's some others. The electricity value chain. You can take a look at this. Westinghouse, SMRs, New Scale, Micro Reactors, Fusion, Electrical Equipment. Okay, Vertiv, I own VRT. GE Vernova, same thing. Battery storage, Tesla. You can, renewables, Enphase, First Solar, GE Vernova, Next Era Energy. All of this, vertical integrators, Constellation Energy, Southern Company, which is my electric company, uh, American Power, Duke Energy, all of those. Look at all of those. Take a look and do your research. Now, over the weekend, in the, in the newsletter, and, and the newsletter is free, by the way, during the week, uh, during the week, I also give you commercial-free podcasts. So if you're getting annoyed by the commercials here, I give you commercial-free podcasts at the newsletter. So it's dailystockpick.substack.com. So if you're annoyed with uh, the the uh, the commercials, go over here and you can get commercial-free uh, podcasts. But in the paid newsletter over the weekend, uh, this is how you find stocks. Three steps to finding stocks that are breaking out the charts and how you spot them. One of the stocks that I highlighted that that... I didn't know it was going to break out, but I kind of had a, uh, a an inkling on it, was Palantir. And so wh wh what I did was um, I kind of touted, patted myself on the back. I hope I didn't do it too badly. But if you go to Savvy Trader and, and you look at this core portfolio, okay, this is beating the uh, SPY. Ever since it was created, it's beaten SPY. But take a look at Palantir because um, what I want to point out is when I bought this, okay? I bought this October 10th, 2023. Why did I buy it? Well, I took out Snowflake because Snowflake wasn't performing in the core portfolio. This, this is not something where I trade a bunch. This is like once a quarter, I decide on these names and then I put them in or take them out. But Palantir, I decided, you know what? It, it's a stock that's moving in October, 2023. And I said, Snowflake's not. And so I'm going to take uh, take out Snowflake. Hold on one sec. Stop. Dog's crying because she wants to be put under the blanket. Um, I just have to say, she's perfectly capable of putting herself under the blanket. Uh, I can't. Boo! <laughs> I'm calling the girlfriend. She'll put her under the blanket if she needs to, but she'll stop. But, but yeah, so Palantir, I didn't have any kind of inkling that it was going to break out like it did, but I did say... And I put this in the uh, in the newsletter. I did have some uh, some inkling that hey, we've got a, a potential um, uh, support here up at thirty at twenty five and thirty. So when I'm looking at this one and I say, okay, I bought this in October twenty twenty three. It wasn't the bottom. It wasn't the bottom. October twenty twenty three is right here at sixteen or seventeen. And I had a note in in uh, in in the uh, in savvy trader. I said. Adding this because I think it's a good play now. I think it's a $20 stock by the end of the year and may face volatility because of the PE. But it's a good, still a good company that deserves to be here. I bought it $17.85. Ever since then, you could have traded it. You could have traded it in the four hour because the four hour makes you money. The four hour does well. But the, again, it's just a point. And that was the point of the newsletter this weekend was, hey, there are opportunities. Now, Shy puts this one in and he points the difference out between Snowflake and Palantir. He is constantly saying that Snowflake is an underappreciated stock in this market. I don't necessarily agree with him in that one because Snowflake is not undervalued. Uh, 
It is overvalued. And that's the problem that you have. Again, if they continue to grow and they continue to put their uh, the, the, their money where their mouth is, this should come down. The PE at 199 is crazy. But when you look at Palantir, the, the PE at 120, Palantir looks like a bargain compared to Snowflake. And so that's the difference that I don't think that, that folks like Shy really pay attention to. And, and because valuation hasn't mattered in these hyper-growth companies. But in my mind, it does make sense. And Palantir was just cheaper than Snowflake. And so that's why I pulled it out. And that's why I think it's breaking out and why I think Snowflake will continue to go down. Now, this one, Tesla, Uber, and Google. This is the CEO, Dara Kashikawi. Kasha, Kashikawi. I, I forget how to say his name, but he's a fantastic, again, a good company with a good product, with good earnings, and fantastic management. He goes over why uh, you know Uber, Google, and Tesla are all in this daily stock pick core portfolio. Again, the daily stock pick core portfolio, it's, it's beating the S&P, you can see the performance right there. But this is just a masterclass as to why you don't necessarily need to pick a winner, but you should have all of them in your portfolio. Now, I argue that Google may, uh, you know, with the de- the 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 de- um, de- Department of Justice and they're uh, they're they're kind of you know they may break them up. It's probably worth more uh, in parts than it is as a whole. That's where I would say. And I think Kasha Kauri points it out here that all three of these can exist and they can do well. Uh, I want to point out uh, one thing that I want to point out, Costco, because this was in a newsletter that I saw from TrendSpider this weekend. And Costco, what I want to do is I want to go back to seasonality. And I want to go back to the last, you know, we'll go back to uh, 15 years, which is what, 2009? We'll go back here. This is what I want to point out. 15 years in November, Costco has been positive 100% of the time. Okay? This is likely due to seasonality. <sighs> the dog needed to be put under the blanket. So, uh, where was it? Costco. 100% of the time, it's positive. The last time it faltered was 2008 during the financial crisis. But since then, it's averaged 5.88%, even rallying as much as 14.5%. And you can see that November up there. It, it, this is 14.5% in November. Again, the consistency is sex likely to strong holiday demand and essential goods. Is it going to go 16 for 16? Let's look at Costco because the algorithm just got you out with a 0.76 uh, loss. I would say anything under 900, I think you're okay. The only problem with this is the valuation. And I point this out a lot. You're paying 49 times forward earnings. But if you're looking for a short-term trade that has some seasonality positivity to it, I think this one might be an opportunity for you to get into an A-plus name. Again, the quant has it as a hold. Uh, the the average price target of uh, uh, uh of Wall Street nine hundred and thirty bucks, nine hundred and thirty dollars. Now they're past their earnings. They've got their ex dividend date coming up in November. Their next earnings are not coming till December. So the only thing that you're really going to get in November is the the uh the, the the October sales. So if you want this weekend, it's not November yet. This weekend, go to a Costco. Go to a Costco parking lot. I saw Jim Cramer posted a photo of himself with the amount of crap that he bought uh, from Costco. Go to a Costco. If the parking lot is full and you see a bunch of people, it's good. Again, it's good. So while, while you're saying that, yeah, Gary, this is expensive. I don't want to buy it. Look at the trend line. Look at how we've broken that trend line. And can we regain that trend line? I think you can. I just think it needs some some space. And I think it needs some time to maybe come da- back down to the 200-day. The 50-day, I'm sorry. But the Bollinger Bands are, are contracting. The Bollinger Bands are contracting. Every time the Bollinger Bands have contracted, we've seen new highs. So, again, it's just a way of looking at this stuff. Now, I will put in the newsletter... Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five ways 
that TrendSpider can help you scan for uh, new stock opportunities. Okay, this is CanSlim. Uh, this is CanSlim, uh, developed by uh, some dude, I forget his name, um, William O'Neill. Legendary, legendary. And this is how it works in TrendSpider. And you can put it in to TrendSpider and scan. Okay, there's also finding the a action, uh, discover hot stocks. I'm going to put all of these videos and blogs into the newsletter. And the reason to do that is to try and show you the value that you're getting for 50 bucks a month. Again, in TrendSpider, if you sign up through my link, I also give you value. I give you the four-hour algorithm. I give you uh, the 65-minute algorithm. I give you all my watch lists. I give you all my scanners. So one thing that I want to point out in TrendSpider is this, okay? For assets that thrive on momentum like Bitcoin, an overbought RSI can actually be a reliable long signal. The strategy enters long Bitcoin when uh, RSI is over 70 and exits 10 candles later. Over the last decade, it has a 65% win rate, average return of 5.9. It's about to print another entry. So if you want TrendSpider and you want to do this, all you have to do is say, hey, alert me when Bitcoin, uh, dollar sign BTC, goes over RSI 70. It's about to print it. And is it coming out of this, this capitulation? Yes. Yes. This is a daily chart. Daily chart. So you can build that in TrendSpider. So go ahead and build it. Share it with me. Share it with somebody. And, and let's see what it, it is so easy to build stuff like that because they've built ChatGPT into the market scanner and the strategy tester. Okay. They built it in. You can literally just put in, uh, hey, enter when RSI is over 70. And the exit, exit 10 candles later. That's it. Super simple. So, and, and that chart, no lying. You can backtest that strategy. Now, we talked about nuclear. Here are some additional names that you can sell, that, that you can look into for uh, nuclear because it is the hot stock. And, and, and like I said, nuclear companies surging as tech firms uh, uh, eye small module reactors. This goes over Oclo, SMR. This goes over BWXT. This goes over Cameco. This goes over Constellation. This goes over Microsoft. This goes over all of those names. And you can look at them. Say you don't know what, uh, you know, Oclo does. Well, you can just go in here and you can look at it and you can say, okay, it's number 15 out of 42 in electric utilities. What's the number one? The number one, uh, at Dispareza Commercial Norda Society. It's like a $1.2 billion market cap. Go with NRG. This has a $17 billion or N and now they have an $80 billion or uh, one of the other ones. That 1.22, I probably would stay away from that one. Profitability is D plus, but NRG Energy, this one has A's all over it. A, A, it's a strong buy. It's an electric utility. Year to date, this one is up 67%. Over the last one month, this one is down 2.7%. Look at that. It's pulled back. It's pulled back. We can see Wall Street, there's 12 analysts that cover this. They say the average price target is 85 can it go higher? Uh, let's see. The 52-week range is all the way up to 96. So it could. And this is the number one. Again, the valuation isn't nuts. They're not making money, but they're expected uh, uh, going forward to actually make money. Their peg ratio uh, for the forward, 0.59. Because you look at the growth, minus 5%. But their EBITDA growth going forward, 26%. 26%. Long-term Kager, 18%. That free cash flow, growth rate forward, 56%. Operating cash flow going forward, 97%. Profitability, 20%. It's a utility. You know, sector medium, 45%. Return on equity, though, 70%. So they're spending money wisely. You can take a look at, at those kind of things and just look at it. Okay, we got a big week of earnings coming up. Big week of earnings. Tesla, GE, GM, Coke, Philip Morris, uh, Love, which is uh, Southwest Airlines, American Airlines, Verizon, uh, AT&T, and more. This article goes over everything. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday's Tesla. Thursday, American Airlines and Southwest. Friday, Colgate, Palmolive. It goes over everything that you need to know about the earnings, okay? You can use Earnings Hub. We can go to Earnings Hub and you can look at, at, at the earnings. I use this all the time. 
And you can say, okay, Tesla, let's look at it. Last time they reported, let's see, revenues of $25.5 billion. They're expected to, to meet that, not beat it, just meet it. Uh, earnings per share last time, $0.52. Cents. Earnings per share this time, $0.61 cents is the estimate. I can't imagine that that Tesla goes up with them lowering the price uh, and, and, and missing, uh, you know, they, they beat on uh, deliveries, but they've been lowering that price. So whether they, they got their, uh, their, their costs more in line, that's a hard thing. So, but again, earnings, you can use earnings hub or you can use seeking alpha because they outline everything perfectly by day, which is what I like. You know, they go over Freeport McNamara, Kimberly Clark, they go over a lot of stuff and they'll put, uh, put it all in there. Uh, social request from Spotify. Hey Gary, what do you think of Vail? Uh, it has a strong buy. I think he uses seeking alpha strong buy per wall street with a price target of $14. They have missed the last three quarters earnings. It's interesting as they pay a 12% dividend as well. Uh, I told Fabiola I would add it to Monday. Okay. Here's what you have to know. And and I'm going to look at the chart. This looks like an upper left to bottom right chart. So let's go take a look at a, a, a short, uh, longer term one. Look at the 200 day, how, how it's just turning down. The 50 days turning down as well. I, I can see right here if you just put, um, we're going to put the, 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 the old support. I think this would be a good look at how it bounced up. Look at how it bounced up. Look at how it kind of hovered. You might want to put this up a little bit more, maybe at $11, say $12, because see how it pulled back here at $12 and it's trading now at $10. That might be where I would put a a good long term uh, kind of, okay, I'm going to buy above it. I'm going to buy below it and sell above it. Uh, and, And it might be if. The valuation makes sense. So let's go and take a look at the valuation veil. Because one thing I will tell you is I hate stocks that have a dividend yield of 12%. um, And they don't have a dividend yield going forward. So let's look at their dividend. Uh, Veil does not currently pay a dividend. V-A-L-E. This does not currently pay a dividend. So Fabiola, I'm not sure where you got the dividend from. Uh, but V-A-L-E, maybe it's a special dividend. Um, that might be a special dividend. So let's go back. Uh, that might be, let's say dividend. And then we can do hypothetical projections, 10%, but dividend history. Um, yeah. So these are special dividends. These aren't regular dividends. Look like they stopped the regular dividend back in 2023. So it's special dividends. So you're not guaranteed anything. Understand that's the difference is that a special dividend is not a a regular dividend. So this is something that, that, that again, when you look at the dividend, uh, it's a special one. It's, it's the hypothetical projection might be 10% rate payout, blah, blah, blah. And it might be a dollar. It might come, but it might not because they haven't declared it. So take the dividend out. Typically, when you have a dividend, I don't like it because the company's not reinvesting in their in their business. So when you look at valuation, it's an A plus. Why? Their PE is just super super low, but their peg sucks, and the growth is where you, where you're having a problem. They have a one point one point seven percent revenue growth. That's good because the sector's losing us two percent, but but the, the overall the growth sucks. Profitability, A+. Plus. They have a 40% profit margin. Momentum sucks. Uh, momentum, they're down 2% three month. Look at the eight month, nine month, one year. So in my mind, I think this, this death cross and that 50 day, I think this reigns supreme. Could I trade it? Yes. On a shorter term? Absolutely. They've missed the last three quarters. There's a reason that this stock is going down because they missed the last three quarters. I would argue that if you want to buy this one, I don't think it's a bad time to buy it. If I were looking at support levels, I'd probably be looking at, at, at a little bit lower um, at probably about 980, 990. You could say you you could argue that that might be a good, um, you know, about 10 bucks, ten dollars and sixty three cents. You're right in between that ten and twelve dollars. But I, long term, I kind of. Eh, yeah. Not, I'm not a super fan, Fabiola. So uh, from Facebook, Jeremy wants me to look at CDNA, 
ranked high on Steve King Alpha, but down um, down 20%, CDNA. Let's look at the chart first, because I do like to look at the chart first, because in my mind, if I don't know it, it's a trade. You know, you can talk me into it with valuation and things of that sort, but if I don't know it, it's a trade. Four-hour algorithm makes you 40%. Buying and holding makes you 44%. You only win 25% of the time. That tells me that your average win with 47%, that tells me 100% it's a trade and you better be setting up A+. plus. Now, your RSI, super low. Your MACD, well below the oscillator. Uh, it's trending down. Your 50 days trending down. Your 200 days still looking up. I would uh, argue that if you bought this at 2384, where it's trading right now, you better have a stop loss at 23 because if it breaks through that 200 day, you can see how far it comes down. But it's a trade. For me, this one would be a trade. You take a look at this one. It's just using that 200 day on the weekly as its resistance. So if you buy here at 24, you better be willing to sell at 30. So in my mind, it's a trade. Let's see if the valuation makes sense from a, a fundamental standpoint. We'll go here. The quant does say it's a strong buy. Now, their market cap, $1.26 billion. That's a small cap. That's a small cap. I, I don't necessarily like small cap. It's also a biotech. So let's go to valuation. They ain't making money. Even if they were to make money on their future, what they projected, the, the, the PE is going to be 86. So it's super expensive. Now let's look at the growth because, you know, if even valuation is good, revenue growth, they're losing 3% year over year. Okay. Levered free cash flow, they're losing 70%. That might mean that you're up for dilution. Let's look at their profitability. They have a 64% gross profit margin, 57%. Now, I do like to go and look at, uh, at Finviz because I'm just used to this. Right now, they're losing $159 million. Cash on hand, $4.34. So they have about $200 million in cash on hand. And you're losing $159 I, I'd, I'd argue you're probably getting ready to uh, to to have a dilution. Now, Wall Street analysts, there's eight analysts that cover this coin flip. There's only eight. And, and they say the $35 price target. They've chased it up. They'll chase it back down as it comes down. They'll chase it back down. If we just look at uh, Seeking Alpha analysts that cover this, it's one. And they haven't covered this. The last time they covered this was September 29th. They said to a uh, buy, they're down 19% since then. Now, there's another one here from uh, July to 2024. Uh, this one said hold. They're up 47% since then. So I wouldn't trust either one of these. But Jeremy, this is what you get with biotech in my, in my opinion. This is what you get with them. You can trade it. And, and again, I would trade this one on the four hour because it makes you just as much as buying and holding. That 4%, it's a coin flip. And right now, it has you out. So I wouldn't get back in. I would get back in when the four hour tells you to. That's how I would play that one, Jeremy. I, other than that, I know nothing about it, but there's my assumption. I, I'm just not a big fan of biotech. Now, one thing that I am a big fan of that took off last week is Netflix. Netflix has a buy at 754. We talked about how this one got you out with a 3% gain right before uh, earnings. And then earnings killed it and it gapped up and you're seeing a gap here. We can pull this uh, uh, up. So there's a gap. You can see a gap here between 696 and 735. I would not buy this at 754 right now. I think you'll have a chance to buy this again at a lower price. And how? I, it's just a guess, but we're, we're heading into, you know, look at l the last time you didn't have a chance. The, their last October earnings. You didn't have a chance to buy this lower. You had to wait until 600, 617 to buy this at 557 to buy it lower. So if you want this one, just buy it. The algorithm makes you 146%. Buying and holding makes you 254%. I would argue that for the long-term player, you could buy this and just be fine. You will have two NFL games. They started uh, uh, advertising this last night. You've also got rig which is a, um, a, a, a an energy name that we trade. I like to trade this one. You Again, this is one that I would argue you have to have an A-plus setup in order to buy it. You only win 22% of the time. One that I like to trade in the uh, the algorithm, 
is DraftKings. DraftKings got you in and out. It got you in again. Okay. The algorithm makes you 175%. Buying and holding makes you 202%. You win 42% of the time. Your average win is 17%. Their earnings are coming up. This just got you in again. I would argue that this one makes sense. Again, they're not making money. They're not making money. And the valuation doesn't make sense. But I, 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 I would argue that this one is going to pop. When you look at Wall Street, there's 36 analysts that cover this. Their average price target is 50 50. They haven't chased it down. The stock has just come down. So will they chase it down uh, if their earnings comes out? Yeah. This is ranked number 17 out of 29 on the casino. RSI is number one. Flutter is number two, which is um, uh, the other uh, online one. Win is number three, Las Vegas Sands. All of these these things have a, a green on the quant. But a, again, I like DraftKings. It came up in the... Um, in the um, in the uh, the f- the scan for the four hour, hey, it's bullish on the four hour, so it came up. Um, one that came up, uh, Trans Alta. This one, it got you out with a thirty eight percent gain. Could it be going again? Could it be going again? You look at this one, and we look at it weekly. Uh, I've said, hey, that eleven seventy nine is going to be resistance, but those Bollinger bands wide open. You're trading at the top. TAC, it is on the the watch list in Trend Spider. One that I got out of, and I got out at the bottom, I got out at like 25, it's trading at 26. I can get back in if I want. It's now showing bullish tendencies. It got you in at 17. The algorithm makes you 212%. Okay, you win 38% of the time. Your average win is 40%. This is a small cap stock. This was an alpha pick. They took it out. There was a short seller research on this one. But GCT... We're heading in the direction of a golden cross where the the 50 day is going to cross that 200 day. The Bollinger Bands just cinched up. They're getting ready to pop again and you have a confirmation on the upside. This one, super volatile. Trade it. You got income ETFs, QQQI. You got leverage DFTFs uh, that just crossed up like SPXU, SDS, MSTX. You got low cost ETFs like VEA and VSS. All of that in the uh, the Daily Stock Pick newsletter. Okay, you'll get the newsletter for free today. If you want commercial free podcasts, they're in there as well. But if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, all of this is available again. Daily Stock Pick newsletter. You can get every all of the 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 products that I told you that I use. You can get them on Linktree. Support the podcast. Use the Linktree. You want a new f- uh, phone service? Get it visible. You, you want a, a sports betting program that's bet on stocks instead of sports because you win more with stocks? Get Weeble. You want to sign up for the newsletter? It's right there. You want AT&T at your house, which I use GigaNet, GigaNet service? Uh, I have one gig symmetrical. I love it. I love it. Through AT&T. Go and sign up there. Uh, you can give me with Venmo, PayPal, or Cash App if you made money. You don't have Venmo? You can sign up for Venmo. And I have a Reddit uh, community as well. Uh, Facebook group, the YouTube uh, so X, Twitter, Twitter, Voss, whatever, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, it's all on uh, Linktree. Have any questions, hit me up. My email's right here. Email's up in the upper right. Don't miss out on the Trend Spider sale. It's up today. Okay, have a great day. See you, Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell.